Good morning. Welcome to your yoga practice. Uh, some of you are new to this YouTube channel, so uh, please hit subscribe. Um, I want to make sure that you see my notifications when my new videos come out. Most videos are available through private subscription only, so you would send me an email. It's $40 a month, unlimited classes. You get five a week. And the public ones I put on every so often just to make sure that you are aware of what is available. Our classes are a little different. They're not hardcore intensive. They're meant to fulfill the heart, the mind, and the body. So we have a good mix of positive readings, information, and asana or practices. I do take requests. Today, the, there's two stories I wanted to read you. Um, one was embrace your greatness to see the greatness in others. And this is something we talk about a lot. The Sanskrit word for adhikara, adhikara, is one's individual gifts or skills and sensibility. Each human being can best offer to the world. So what were you here for and how are you gonna give these gifts back to the world? Not everyone has become aware of what they're good at or their gift. Recognizing this means recognizing your own innate gifts, owning the greatness that you possess as a result of those gifts. So it's actually your obligation to use them and um, actualize them instead of just wasting them. Some, some religions believe it's actually a waste to not use your gifts. And letting the knowledge and power guide you in the world. When you are comfortable with who you are, you are better, what? When you are comfortable with who you are and confident of what you have to offer, you are better able to see the greatness in others. So that sounds a lot like when you love yourself, you're better at loving others. By embracing your adhikara, you embrace the gifts of others as well. So that being open to seeing your gift helps you be open to see others' gifts. And the second one I'm gonna read is, sometimes we read the mythology or the stories that are Hindu stories. They're often used in yoga as an opportunity to share information. It does not mean it's necessarily religious. Just think of it as a parable. The myth of Ganesha and Chandra. I think Chandra means moon. We talked about we talked about moon poses sometimes. The elephant-headed god Ganesha arrived one evening in the village where the sweets had been made and left to cool. He breathed in the delicious aroma of the sweets and tried one. And as soon as he swallowed it, he could not restrain himself and ate them all. Embarrassed, he climbed into his into his mouse Musika to make his escape. He was so heavy that Musika stumbled, tipping over Ganesha whose belly opened, spilling out the sweets. Ganesha heard laughter. He looked into the sky and saw Chandra, or the moon. The moon god mocking him. Frustrated, Ganesha hurled his broken tusk at Chandra, shattering him, telling that from this point on, Chandra would wax and wane. And on the final day of his waning, he would resemble Ganesha's tusk. I love this, crescent moon. Both Ganesha's plight and Chandra's fate show us just that when we take in the world one small amount at a time, we are better able to savor it instead of being greedy. And that we too wax and wane. We don't need to have everything all at once. Oh, I love that. I will definitely be remembering that story. So, uh, I've heard some great response that you really do like the plank challenge. So instead of being a challenge, I think I have to remind myself to just to stick to a minute every day. We'll just add a minute to our practice of our plank, high plank, and think of it as a way as tuning an instrument. We want to keep our instrument or our temple healthy and strong and able to take on whatever's thrown at us from the world. Okay, what's today's animal? Hummingbird. Hmm. I don't know that there's a hummingbird pose, but we've never received this one. And the, the essence of it is joy lighten up. I love this. I have the word joy written all over my house. I keep it up from Christmas because I want people to see the joy. And sometimes we have to be reminded almost like someone has to tap you on the shoulder and say, this is your life. Choose happiness. Choose joy. Don't go expecting somebody else to bring it to you or an, an item or a thing. Okay. Have you ever seen images of the laughing Buddha or the laughing Jesus? Well, these spiritual masters and many others knew that life was not to be taken all that seriously. Life is very transitory and fleeting, and although we may interpret events in our life as requiring solemnity, they're not the big deal. Don't take everyday life too seriously, and it's meant to be enjoyed. And I was thinking about that concept of heaven on earth, and even if you don't believe in heaven, 
can you find the essence of heaven in your everyday life? Don't wait for it for you to be dead. Don't wait for you to be rich. Don't wait for you to be married. Find your essence, your joy, your heaven now. Having a good time, whether working, playing, resting, eating, or just hanging out with loved ones. Yes, there are tragedies and losses, and it's best to give yourself time and space to grieve them and to release the tears, but let them fall away. Eventually let your grief transmute to joyful memories and warm feelings for those and what has come before. There's such precious little time on this planet. Make every moment count. Love, then go and love some more, no matter what else is going on. I love that. And I was, there was a quote I read somewhere. It was like, when you cry a lot out of sadness for somebody, it means that they, that you love them that much. If you don't cry that much out of sadness, you're not mourning them, then you would be cold and sad and they wouldn't be that important to you. So let's come out of the mat. Um, we did do some bird pose the other night. Let's do crow. Even though hummingbird is the complete opposite of crow, a hummingbird is this tiny, diminutive, fast, speedy animal, um, it's still, we're gonna do that one. I'm gonna slowly lay the back down, knees to chest, rocking side to side, little boat or circles. One direction, then the other. <clears throat> Knees to the left. We're gonna do our floor work really quickly. Oh, that feels delicious. Maybe stretch your arms up to a T. Maybe hug your knees in tight so you're really releasing this right glute or lower back. And I'm taking my right arm into cactus because I wanna continue working and opening my upper back. Back to center. Circles. One direction and the other. And then we're gonna take our knees to the floor on the right, double it, spinal twist, left arm to a T or bend at the elbow and cactus. Sometimes this muscle right here in the pack into the armpit, um, it can be tight, especially if you are at a desk all day or on technology a lot. We curl the shoulders forward so this piece shortens as the back of our shoulder overstretches. Take a few breaths here, feeling that deep opening of the left side of the body. Back to center, little boat or circles. And now let's draw the left knee in, left, sorry, right knee in, left foot in the sky, flex. Pressing that lower back down, pulling that thigh as deeply as I can into my belly. Always remembering if your knee is sore, you're coming behind the thigh instead. You don't have to add that compression on the shin. And then we'll slowly lower that left leg halfway down, pull it in, lower a little lower, pull it in. Option to point, and then finally, oh yeah, releasing the weight of that left leg on the floor. Close your eyes. As right leg draws in, left leg points away. There's that opposing energy. Almost every pose we do, we try to find the oppositions within the pose. Left leg in, right leg up in the air, flex, and drop three quarters of the way. Then a little lower. And then oh, all the way down, point the right toes. And just enjoy this moment. There are certain stretches that my body looks forward to. Smile, choose the joy, and let your body also be um, an instrument of it. And then come back to center, right leg in, left leg extends, pause. Maybe massage this left hip flexor, especially my desk friends. Left hand takes right knee over single leg spinal twist. Oh, that feels divine. If I want to go further, I'm going to pull this right knee in so I'm almost in half of a fetal position, deep stretch of that right side, or flex and come out at a right angle. Engage the inner thighs to center. So I'm hovering above the mat. So there's that beautiful stretch and strengthening at the same time. I like that contrast. Ah, back to center, little boat or egg beaters. Left leg in, right leg extends, flex your feet, toes to the sky. Right hand takes left knee over, single leg spinal twist. Option, extend that leg flexed at a right angle. And I can't go very far and hit the wall. Back to center, 
little fold. Mm -hmm. Pull those knees wide and pause for a moment. What's happening in your hips, especially if you have to sit a lot. Smile. Choose the joy in your body as well as your face, mind, and heart. And then coming into the setup for Happy Baby, we'll take a pause here and join this stretch. I just realized the word joy is in enjoy. Enjoy. It sounds like inside the joy. And maybe you're choosing full Happy Baby. Everyone's got a different length of arm or hip mobility. And sometimes I'll go rocking side to side and how far over can I go? I bring myself up right. Back to center, soles the feet together, pause. Each time you breathe out, you're attempting to press the knees further away from you and press the lower back down. So we get a nice stretch in the hips, almost as if we're doing butterfly. I'm gonna take my chin slightly to the ceiling, creating that curve in the neck, and then release the feet to the mat. Let's take our arms behind us stretched out Recline cobbler or bound angle, but in this case, I want to lengthen my torso. Belly and lower abdomen engages. Stretch out the rib cage. Oh, I'm getting a stitch. Palms up, biceps beside your ears. Press those nails into the floor. Press the soles into each other. Can we find that contrast of strength and stretch at the same time? And then back to center. Can you keep your arms where they are? Let's take our feet in the sky. Roll out your ankles. Bend your toes. Legs wide, no hands. First you might have soft, relaxed ankles, then you might flex. Soft, flex. Beautiful. Just enjoy what's happening inside the inner thighs. Close your legs. Let's bring right over left and into your belly. Option to take your hands to the opposite knees. We're in full shoelace or grabbing opposite ankles. Or some of us are going to grab opposite flex feet. Release, roll out your ankles, other side, left over right, can you first do it no hands, what does that look like? Then we're going to stack those knees, pull them into your belly, or opposite ankles, or opposite blades. Release and shake it out. Let's roll into our side. I've had some really nice feedback about how some of you prefer vigorous practice, some of you prefer, most of you seem to prefer the slow, mindful, counted breath, introspective practice. What I love the best is all of you have found a way to make my directive your practice. And whether that's taking what I'm doing is maybe slow when you want to make it more muscular effort, that's available to you. Most of you have been practicing yoga long enough that you know just to hold things longer and activate the muscle groups. Turning on Hasabana and Padabana. Others who want the opposite, slow and mindful, you often will just do more of what I'm asking, but slower. So I love that adaptability, and that's kind of what we have to be. That's part of our resiliency. So coming to tabletop for a moment without even adding anything yet, what happens just by tucking your toes? pressing your palms to the floor, and I haven't made any cues yet, and I feel my stomach muscles immediately turn on. My body seems to know what it needs when we move into a new shape. So I'm going to take tailbone to the sky and start to look up slightly. Oh, without even engaging my core, I feel those muscles turn on. And then slowly, tail drops, look between your hands, push the floor away, and maybe eventually bringing chin to chest. We're going to slowly move back into cow. Tail up, head up, look up, big deep curve in the lower back, engage the core coming back into cat. By this point you've added in your own breath pattern. 
And some of this is exploration, some of it is habit. But can you really bring that awareness to the spine as if this was the very first time you ever did cat cow? <coughs> Excuse me. And then untuck your toes, press back, let's keep our knees together. First extended child pose are going to be knees together. Oh, walk the fingers away. What happens to the muscles all down the rib cage? And then let's take, keep our toes touching. Can you walk your knees a little wider while you're here? And attempt to bring your chest to the floor. And then coming up right. Oh yeah. Okay, tuck your toes. Short downward dog. Option to attempt to drop your heels. Option to lift them up. So I'm gonna go back and forth a few times. What happens in my hamstring? When I drop my heels, can you lift your toes and push your heart towards your thighs? Deep hamstring stretch. Then I'm going to come back on the ball of my feet, lift my heels, press my heart towards my thighs. Another stretch. Drop the heels, lift the toes, heart towards the thighs. Different stretch. And just explore how by making these adjustments, moving my bones the shape they're in, I get a different sensation or reaction. Walk your feet towards your hands and let your head go. Wide arm, reach up, lengthen, exhale, fold, swan dive, wiser and add. Half back, full, plant, lower all the way down. This has never happened. Sleeping cobra, big breath in. Exhale, pick up your head, baby cobra. Press back, downward dog. Pedaling your dog, and I want you to try to pedal pressing heel down, not bending the knees. It's a different pedaling experience, especially as I press left down, legs are straight, I feel it deeply into the glute. Right foot forward, left foot back. Press that right foot down, rise up. So I'm rooting to rising within the one foot, where's my stability? Some of it's in my head, some of it's in my body. Hands release, feet together. Hold, heart center. Inhale up, exhale, fold. Half back, hold, plant. Your choice, chaturanga or drop your knees and slowly mindfully layer the heart between the hands. Boy, breast sleeping cobra. Pick up your head, baby cobra. Press back, downward dog. Pedaling once more, no bent knees. Left foot forward, press into that foot, right foot back, lift the heel, rise with stability. Some of it's blind faith in your anatomy. Hands release, feet together, fold, rise, heart center. Let's keep going, you're doing a great job. Remember, it's your practice. So if you want to do 10 of these sun salutations, which I would love to, um, you're going to. If you want to just do one mindfully, holding each position within it for two breaths, it's another variation. Inhale up. Exhale, fold. Half back. Fold. Hands down. Come down. And mindfully lower the heart between the hands. Moving meditation. Inhale, heart rises, baby cobra, or take it further into up dog, down dog, right foot forward, left foot back high or low lunge, press into that front foot, rise, hands release, feet together, fold, rise, heart center, last side for now. Inhaling up, exhale, fold, half back, fold, plant, I'm going to come down to my knees and slowly lower my heart between my hands, one breath, sleeping cobra, pick up your head, choosing a bigger back bend or coming into up dog, down dog, Left foot forward, 
right foot back, find your stability, root and rise. I can feel that differently from one hip to the other. Hands release, feet together, pull, rise, heart center. Nice work. So, when we do crow, I remember my first time explained to me that 80% of it is in my head. There's a fear, we see these poses and we think, oh, I can't do that. We immediately shut down instead of exploring. Um, how about when you start dabbling with paint supplies, you might say, I can't do that. But as you do, the, the process is kind of the whole reason you're doing it. And before you know it, you've lost complete track of time, you enjoyed the process and you have a finished product. And our finished product would be our pose. The one piece, two things, let's start with this. Let's work on the hip piece because I need hip mobility to get my body to the floor and get these heavy hips above my shoulders. So I'm gonna start for a moment in a squat. If this is completely unavailable to you, lift your heels if you need to. Everyone's squat's gonna be different. But today I do want us to try to attempt a regular squat. And I'm gonna bring my elbows into my inner knees. Face you. And widen. I'm fortunate to have very externally rotated hips. Not everyone does. So for some people, this is probably their least favorite pose. If that's the case, it could be anatomy. If you want to get an x-ray, ask your chiropractor. It could also be your job tightening inside the lower half of the body. So therefore, um, this is really important for you. Um, I'm going to show you another variation. If for some reason you really wanted to do a squat in your body and gravity, don't like it. This is one of my favorite versions. I would come to my wall, hips to the wall, come up. We haven't done this in a while. I haven't done it against this fabric at all. And look, I immediately bend my knees and come into a squat. I'm going to walk my feet down the wall. My tailbone is to the wall. My lower back is pressing down. Hug it in. Guess what? I can get into a much deeper squat using the wall than gravity. And you might stay here in cactus. You might stretch your arms out. You might hold your knees. So whatever squat is, maybe this is your squat, maybe this is your squat. All I know is this is a lot easier on your joints. And maybe for one week, you do this once a day. I won't bore you by staying here, but oh, that is my adapted squat. We also sometimes will use blocks for our adapted squat. Today though, I want you to attempt a muscular effort squat. Oh, and I can literally spend hours here. What eventually would give way is my Western knees. <laughs> Two more breaths. Oh. And some people, their bum gets closer and closer to the earth as your body softens. This pose might look familiar to you because if you've ever seen a newborn baby, their knees naturally pull in and this is often how you were able to fit like a child's pose into your parent, your mother's body before you came into this earth. Okay, that's one piece I want to use for, actually let's do one more hip thing. I've noticed that if I spend the effort on my hip mobility, it ultimately affects knee pain, and that seems to plague a lot of my friends. So I'm gonna pick up this leg, right hand holds the blade, and we're gonna stir. First, it's almost like vertically, one direction, then the other. Then horizontally, stir some soup. And then I'm going to switch that foot into my other hand. Left hand holds the foot, right hand holds the knee, rock the baby. Flex. You want to keep the belly engaged so I'm sitting upright. Now I'm going to take it a little deeper. Foot into the crook, knee to the crook, interlock my hands. Monkey grip. This feels divine for my hips and glute, but not everybody. Let's pull it close as it feels good and pause. Two breaths. Not moving. Inhale one. Exhale. Inhale two. Sit up nice and straight. Notice the discomfort if there is any. Exhale. Release. Other side. Left knee bends coming to the outer blade from inside the left leg. And we're going to pedal horizontally one side than the other. That's my dominant side so it's dramatically tighter. And then soup. Horizontally stirring one direction than the other. 
and then rock the baby. So my right hand holds my left foot, left hand, left knee, rocking side to side, little boat. Awesome. If I want to go further, is my hip up for it today? Oh, coming into oh, super tight. So do I force it? My ego wants it to be balanced on both sides, but the satire, the truthfulness means that this side is tighter and I really shouldn't. Ahimsa, do no harm. Very important, one of the nouns. And it's important that we don't do harm to our own body. If we took that level of recognition to our relationships in the earth, everything would be better. Let's quickly come into diamond for a moment. Do you notice we keep focusing on how can I Relax my hips. I'm gonna, oh, lean forward and then come out. Chest forward, lean forward. Maybe your elbows gently press open and then come back out. One more time, inhale, chest forward. Hinge slightly forward, maybe the elbows open and come on out, nice work. Okay, next piece, we talked about our hips. Next piece is gonna be stacking the bones in my arm and I had it likened to me once that the um, <clears throat> crow pose is about balancing precariously bones and body parts that are defying gravity. So think of an anukshuk, these stones balance precariously in a particular shape. They're not glued together, but they stay there. We're gonna use our arms as the base of our anukshuk. We're gonna make this structure, and if I keep the structure for more than a nanosecond, that's okay, it doesn't matter. So tabletop, tuck your toes, shift your weight into those arms, and then maybe come back down. I noticed instantly my core turned on. There's that interconnectivity in totally unrelated pieces of our body we didn't expect. Arms are heavy, bones are stacked, my palms are broad, and I'm gonna start to lift up my body weight, shifting forward into those wrists, weight bearing. Also good for wrist pain and osteoporosis. Let's do this again. Palms under the shoulders, equal pressure in all the knuckle joints, the finger pads, and the palm. Start to lift up, and I might even walk forward a little, press my weight as if I was going to come into a handstand and then step back into my heels. Maybe you come forward with the ball of your foot, lean, 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 feel the core turn on, and then come back up. Obviously, I'm not using a militant Iyengar setup for this pose. I'm using my life hack Rebecca version. Press the palms into the floor. I'm shifting all my weight. I can feel core all the way up to my almost my chest turn on. One more time. Shift, 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 shift. I'm barely on my tippy toes as if I could float into a handstand. And then I'm going to come out and come into a child's pose for a rest. So now that we've done all that, by the time we actually do this pose, it's going to seem easy for you. Let's take one block. This is another variation that some studios use. Instead of on the floor by itself, I'm going to take this block to make my hips a little higher. So I'm going to step on the block, one foot then the other. Automatically knees come together, toes come together, and this is where I feel like we're a gargoyle. Bend your knees enough that you can get your palms flat. <sighs> and then I'm gonna come down, bend. My knees naturally open. I know I'm not doing this correctly, the Iyengar way, but it's my way. Elbows bend slightly, and I'm gonna start to shift my weight forward. My inner uh, shin and calf meet just below the knee. Starts to come onto the back of my arms, look forward. Palms press into the floor, shifting weight, trust. Look forward, what if we didn't go any further than this? Shift, 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 maybe lift a right toe, and then come back down. You know that playing around with this pose is actually the whole fun of it. Palms press into the floor, shift forward, this time left foot lifts, and come back down. And now I'm gonna attempt it for a nanosecond. Shift, 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 make your look shift, look forward, toes together touching. I did it, I didn't hold it long enough. That's one variation. I'm gonna show you without the block. First, I like to come into that squat pose we started with. I kind of feel like a little frog. Palms in front of me, shoulder width apart. 
Remember, we talked about the stacking of the bones is where the stability of this pose is. Throw in the muscles, tissue, skin, and intention. It's perfect. Shift, 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 shift. Look forward. Pick up right foot, then left. Come back down. Can I do it again? Palms forward, shift, shift, shift. Maybe toes touching. I did it for a nanosecond. So that piece is really crucial. Even if you do it for a nanosecond, it gets you out of your head. And it gives you the courage to maybe try it a little longer. Shift, 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 look forward, maybe together, undo. That's your homework. Can you play with that pose? Maybe get everyone in the family involved. Um, and then maybe come back to that squat. Ah, delicious. Thank you so much. We're gonna now move into our reading today. I want something really positive. Hmm, these are cute. I use this lady a lot, love her artwork. Let's do our reading for today. And I really do want you to take away that work on um, eagle, crow. It's funny, crow is considered one of the most intelligent birds on the planet related to blue jay. And once you know that, now when you hear the blue jay and the crow <laughs> aggressively, I call them the Karens of the bird world, you know that, you can hear their call, it's very similar, and now you become more aware of their talking to each other. In a lot of um, native groups and folklore, it is considered one of the most important birds. Very ominous to see one. Oh my gosh, I just got choose love. I swear we keep coming back that theme today. If you're struggling with an obstacle or conflict, choose a path of love. Suffering, doubt, frustration, all transform in the path of love. To show your love courageously, show your love openly. Show your love with no strings attached. It's safe to give and receive love. In fact, if you have a hard time with self-love, start outside yourself and work your way in. Showing love to others can be a gateway to loving yourself. So what's funny is that's kind of the opposite. Lately, there's been a lot of memes. And I know we talk about a lot how important you have to love yourself before you can truly love somebody else. But that's kind of saying the opposite. It's sometimes easier to show our love to other people, especially this time of year, baking presents, acts of love, shoveling their snow. Maybe it's easy to keep projecting what does active love look like in your daily life? Pick a neighbor who you don't normally do active um, acts of love with, and then it slowly starts to become so natural that it's not a big deal when finally you've shifted that love and actions to yourself. Thank you so much for your effort. The good in me sees the good in you. Namaste.